Why is a Volkswagen T-Roc so popular? It's a bit like a team building exercise at work. You know, it's trying to be all fun and cool, but it's actually a little bit dull. But despite that, since this car first went on sale six years ago, Volkswagen has sold 112,000 of them in the UK. Despite being quite old now, last year alone, 24,000 were sold. By comparison, Volkswagen only sold 28,000 Golfs in the UK. So let's find out why. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. To put the T-Rox popularity into context, in 2023, Volkswagen sold more of these cars than Polestar, Genesis, Bentley, Alfa Romeo, Jeep, and Subaru sold across their entire model lineups combined. It's crazy. Now, part of the reason for the appeal is this, the Volkswagen badge. Despite Dieselgate, it's still got plenty of appeal. Also, the T-Roc is just the right size for mass appeal. So it's a small family hatchback that's lifted slightly, so it gives it an off-roadery SUV type look. Plus, you have quite a solid sound to it. Oh yeah. yeah. Even the back door, back doors normally sound a bit tinny, but this one, still solid. That matters. Also, parts of the car look quite good, you know, the bold creases, spoiler, the contrasting roof, the roof bars. Now, I'm not so sure about these stickery bits here. And this car has quad tailpipes, which are completely fake, as I'll reveal here with the car wire sticker truth. I mean, that's just embarrassing. The real exhaust is hidden there somewhere. But forget about that. I can see why some people might like the look of this car. Reason two, this car actually handles really, really nicely. Yes, it's based on a Golf and it's jacked up slightly, so it doesn't drive quite as well as a Golf because it's got a higher center of gravity. And to compensate for that, Volkswagen has had to fit slightly stiffer suspension. And this particular car has the R-Line sport suspension on it, so it's stiffer than standard, which I wouldn't recommend because it does affect the ride quality. But what I would definitely recommend is the adaptive chassis control, which this car has. So what I've done is actually set it up in individual mode where I have the adaptive chassis in comfort with everything else in sport and it handles well. You know, I've been used to driving lots of electric cars and they're just a bit heavy and unwieldy, whereas this feels quite light. I mean, it weighs under 1.4 tonnes, which is decent. As a result, it's just nice and responsive. It goes exactly where you think it should do. It grips well. It doesn't feel overwhelmed by weight. The controls are just natural feeling. The brakes seem strong enough. They're not overly grabby. There's no regen braking to confuse matters. It is a nice little car to drive and you can drive it quite spiritedly without it getting out of shape. And when you are in the mood for having some fun, put the gearbox into automatic mode because it's just a little bit more responsive then. More on that in a bit. But I have to say, the way this car handles just makes me a little bit sorry that cars are getting heavier as they move from internal combustion engines to electric power. It's all down to weight. People need to figure out how to make battery powered cars just lighter. Anyhow, back to the T-Roc. Handles pretty blooming well, really, considering what it is. The third reason that the T-Roc is so popular is because it sits about 10 centimeters higher from the ground than the Golf. This means it's easier to just drop down into it or climb out of it, regardless of whether you are eight or 80. And actually, the taller body means that it just feels more spacious back in it than in a traditional hatchback like the Golf. Headroom's good, knee room's decent, there's plenty of foot space, and you can stretch out underneath the seat in front. It's reasonably practical too, so the door bins are a decent size. You have some pockets on the seat backs. There's some cup holders there and through loading if you want to go shopping at Ikea, get some flat pack furniture. Also, look, you've got Isofix anchor points that are very easy to get to. And there is enough space back here for even a bulky rear facing child seat. Overall, this is quite a good compact sized car for families. Reason four, the t rocks compact dimensions and good visibility make it dead easy to drive in town. It's just over four meters long, which is good. You sit ever so slightly higher than in a Golf, so you get a bit better view forward. And yeah, the back's good, side windows, mirrors, that's all good. Also, the turning circle is good. So I'm gonna illustrate that now, but we seem to have a bit of chaos. However, look, watch this. This is gonna annoy this person, but I'll show you that we can all fit through this gap. See? It's compact enough and you get good visibility so you can do that kind of thing. Now, the turning circle is 10.9 meters, which is only really bettered in this category by Ford Puma. And if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen, 
or follow the QR code. You can watch my in-depth video review of that car. But let's see if we can get around here. It's really difficult with these cars parked here. I'm not convinced it's going to happen, but there's hardly any cars that will do a U-turn in here. I've kind of like destroyed my own point, but I can see what's going on and having the little reversing camera does help me. But I don't have to reverse it that much to be able to get round and we're through. I mean, that was quite a tight space. So that's good. You can see why they're so popular with people that just want to do the school run and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. Everyone's nice around here, aren't they? Now, I'm going to show you another thing. You see, I am rubbish at parking cars. Going to admit it, not great, but it's quite easy in the T-Rock. Let's give it a go. Don't laugh at me. Here we go. That's quite narrow. Let's get it into this space. It says it's quite narrow. Everyone watching is going, mate, you can park a bus in there. And there we go. Simples. You've got the kit to help you. You've got the visibility you need. You've got the maneuverability and light steering and the compact dimensions. Perfect for town work. Finally then, reason five why the T-Rock is so popular is because you get lots of equipment as standard. So even the entry-level car gets digital climate control. Shouldn't moan about the fact that you get an 8-inch touchscreen as standard. This is a slightly larger one because this is a higher spec vehicle, but the entry-level sat-nav system is pretty decent. And anyway, you're going to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are standard. Speaking of which, you've got two USBs here and there's two USB-Cs there in the back as well. You also get a digital driver's display as standard and a multi function steering wheel to control some of the views on there. All T-Rocks get front and rear parking sensors, though if you want the reversing camera, which is kind of cool the way it pops out from underneath the VW badge so that it's kept clean, that's an extra £375, which I will probably pay for. What you don't have to pay extra for is some extended storage solutions. So on top of the usual glove box, which is actually a decent size on this car, cup holders and cubby spaces and door bins, you also get, look, a drawer underneath the driver's seat. And it's actually a decent size. I've got a can of can't actually tell the brand of drink there, otherwise that would be product placement. You also get an adjustable boot floor. That comes as standard, they don't charge you any extra for that. However, while that's well and good, there are five reasons not to buy a T-Rock. I'm going to talk you through those now, and at the end of the video, show you two alternatives to this car, which you may prefer. Buying a new or used car? Then you need to visit CarWow, and we'll help you find your perfect car at a price you'll love. Just answer a few simple questions about the car you want and our trusted dealers will come back to you with great offers. Then choose the offer that's right for you and contact the dealer directly through CarWow. No haggling, no fees, and on average, CarWow users save over 1,800 pounds. But what if you're not sure which car you actually want? No problem. Just watch our insightful video reviews, read our impartial expert advice, or use our helpful car buying tools to discover your ideal car in no time at all. No wonder 95% of customers surveyed said they wouldn't buy a car without CarWow. I've put a link in the description of this video and the pinned comment to take you directly to CarWow so you can see for yourself how it can help you, or you can just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing up there right now. Alternatively, just Google help me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose your perfect car and get it for a price you'll love. Now on with the video. The first reason not to buy a Volkswagen T-Roc is the price. So the entry level car starts at £28,000, which is all right, but still quite expensive. This one here, which has the mid-spec 1.5 litre four-cylinder turbo petrol mated to the automatic gearbox front wheel drive in top specification R-Line, £36,000 starting. Now, if you want it with a two litre engine for more power, 200 horsepower, then it's going to cost you £39,000, though that car does come with all wheel drive. And if you want the very top of the range model, the R, that's £45,000. However, you know, I said this was £36,000. It's not actually because it's got some options fitted. This one here is £41,000. And here's why. Wireless charging, £300. Keyless entry, that's £400. Ooh. Detachable tow bar, £765, and space saver spare wheel, £300. King's red metallic paint with contrasting black roof, £1,390. Black trim instead of chrome round here, and black wheels, £700. Dynamic chassis control with adaptive suspension with three modes, comfort, normal, and sport, £1,050. And the reversing camera is... 
375 pounds. So both of those options, I would definitely tick. That means the total cost of all the options on this car is 5,280 pounds, which takes the total cost of this very car here to 41,480 pounds. That's too much for a T-Rock, I'm sorry, but it is. That's why you need to get a car wire look because you can save an average of 2,150 pounds off one through car wire. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go onto the car wire configurator, configure my ideal Volkswagen T-Rock, my perfect engine, trim combination, and the options that I would fit. And if you wanna see what that car is and exactly how much you can save on it through car wire, just click on the pop-out banner appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the QR code now using your phone. Let's move on. Reason two, the performance. Now this 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol engine has 150 horsepower, which is fairly respectable. And on paper, the 0-60 time with this seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox is 8.3 seconds. Now there's no launch control, but I've got it in sports mode and I've turned the traction off so that it doesn't kill the power if I spin up my front wheels, which it'll probably do. Now I'm gonna launch it to see how close I can get to that time. Use my specialist timing gear here. So we're on auto hold. I'm just gonna floor the throttle. wheel spin what we're we gonna do 8.5 that is okay bit of wheel spin obviously we had the stop start off so it had to start the engine <laughs> as I came to accelerate which isn't ideal but probably didn't make any difference but 8.5 with a bit of wheel spin on an ungrade surface that's not bad thing is though that isn't the issue with this car the problem with the performance is when you're just driving around normally and it's because the gearbox and the engine I don't think are the best bedfellows now to illustrate this I'm gonna come out of sports mode go into normal mode going to normal auto the gearbox and if I can put the traction control on okay. so when you're just driving along it's all quite cruisy you don't really notice the automatic gearbox changing gears much but if you need a sudden burst of acceleration there's a bit of a delay and then finally the engine and gearbox work it out and it starts pulling but you do get quite a bit of a racket from that engine as it's starting to rev out and there also seems to be a little bit of a dead spot when you first press your foot down. So I'm in sixth gear now. I'm actually just pushing my foot down. I'm flexing it and there's no throttle response. And it's really quite funny when you come from driving an electric car, which is just on it straight away, to this being a little bit dead at first. And now I'm gonna experience a real problem. So sometimes you're coming out of a junction like you're looking like that, and all of a sudden you need a burst of acceleration because there's a truck coming. You put your foot down, nothing, nothing, nothing. Now it's scrabbling for grip, bit of traction control, and finally we're away. And that that can be a little bit disconcerting in a moment. I'm going to do another junction, one that's even dodgier. Now with a manual version of this car, you don't have that issue so much because you can just control it yourself. In the auto version, there just seems to be this dead spot when you have the engine out of like turbo boost, you know, it's in the laggy zone, and then the gearbox is trying to figure out what to do, and you just end up in no man's land. Okay, so I'm riding up to the junction now. I'm going to look, look, look in the blind spot let's get going floor it nothing happening oh finally oh bit of wheel spin oh god just about got away can be a little bit fraught i think it'd be so much better if you just got a manual you can just hold the car in the power band and then take off here's another time when this happens so you're just cruising along and then you suddenly want to overtake maybe you're coming up to a faster bit of road and you're in sixth gear so one from top then you floor it so i'm going to floor it in three two one floor now we're taking off. And the performance on that first bit in second gear, it's not there. It's all just noise with no acceleration. And it seems to get quicker when you go into third gear and you can then ride the engine's torque. But there's definitely this thing. Look, I'm in seventh gear now, 50 mile now, I'm gonna floor it. There we go, pick it up now. There's sort of a dead spot just around 2000 RPM and I'm really laboring the point, but this gearbox seems to labor the engine at times. It's a bit like making a sprinter run in their slippers rather than their running shoes. Now, before you go on at me saying, Matt, why don't you just have the car's automatic gearbox in sport mode? The reason is you always end up holding too high a gear, which isn't relaxing. So I'm doing 50 and it's in fifth, put it into drive it's probably pop into six, which is just more fuel efficient and more relaxing. 
That brings me on to another thing. You see, I think the two litre diesel version of this car is slightly better. You just have more pulling power, more torque from that engine, and it just works better, both of the manual and the automatic gearbox. Plus you get better economy out of that. Apparently it'll do 60 miles to the gallon. This one's supposed to do 46 miles to the gallon, though the reality, again, 36 miles to the gallon. Still can't complain that it is a decent range of engines with this car. What there isn't though, is any hybrids or electric versions, but that doesn't bother me too much. Anyway, if you are getting this particular 1.5, get it with the manual, not the auto. They don't work well together. Reason three, the interior quality isn't quite as good as in some of its competitors and isn't worthy of a car that costs as much as this very car does here at £41,000. For instance, in the Golf, the door tops here in the front are soft touch material, which is handy because that's where you rest your elbow. In this, even though it's more expensive, the top of the door feels cheaper. Also in the Golf, you get some felt lining in the door pockets to stop things rattling around, but not here. Oh dear. Do you know what? I think the interior quality of a Nissan Qashqai feels better than this T-Roc. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, just click on the pop-out banner appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen or use the QR code appearing now. And that brings me on to the boot because the maximum capacity of the Nissan Qashqai's boot is 500 litres, whereas on this it's 450 litres. It's smaller still if you have a four-wheel drive model because the four-wheel drive system eats into the boot floor. However, there are some things I like about this boot. Look, you've got these little dampers on the strings for the low cover, so when they rattle about they don't make a noise. There is this little catch system here which holds up the false floor so you can get underneath there. And I do like the fact that when I fold the seats down, you will see they do lie rather flat. However, it's pretty blooming annoying that Volkswagen didn't figure out how to make the load cover fit underneath this false floor. It, no. It's not, it's not going in. I'm pretty sure it's not, it's not, it's just, it's, it's going to go for a flight. Don't come back and hit me. I thought it was going to get its revenge. The fifth and final reason not to buy a Volkswagen T-Roc is because of a couple of updates that VW have made to it to supposedly make it better, but they've actually made it worse. For instance, rather than traditional twisty knobs for the climate control, which are very easy to use, you now have these sliders like you have in the ID3, and they're just a little bit more awkward to operate when you're driving. Then there's the fact they've slightly redesigned the dash and given you a sort of plonked on infotainment system before it was integrated, which just looked better. Speaking of which, you used to be able to get some colorful interior trims to brighten up the cabin, but they seem to have gone from the spec list. And finally, top specification cars get this new multifunction steering wheel with touch sensitive buttons with haptic feedback. But you're never sure whether you press things properly and you think you want to click them, but they don't click in the same way as you expect. And when you're driving, you can accidentally just brush the functions and it changes your menus. Very frustrating. I much prefer the old steering wheel or the steering wheel you get in the cars lower down the range. So much for progress. With all that in mind, what's my final verdict on the Volkswagen T-Roc? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go right ahead and buy it. Well, I reckon you should shortlist the T-Roc. It really is a good all round family car and no wonder it's so popular. However, if you'd like to consider some other cars, I've put a couple of videos there for you. Go check them out. Thanks for watching.